It was a stormy summer's afternoon when a man by the name of Albus Dumbledore first looked upon Wool's orphanage. It hadn't been hard to find, and he could see many older children, obviously the product of the Muggles' Great War, as he'd heard them call it. They looked at him with a sort of innocent curiosity that only children could give, no matter how horrid their conditions or situation. Part of the men wanted to whisk them all away and make them happy, take them from this horrid place. But he couldn't, nonetheless. He offered them a small smile and stepped into the orphanage. A woman was berating a child that apparently muddied the floors, and he waited patiently by the door before the wind took note of him, sending the child on their way. No. Oh. Now who are you? The lady asked, putting her hands on her hips in irritation, booking a face that was certain enough to remind Albus of a particularly fierce dog. Instead of being cowed, he simply increased his smile and held out a hand. Professor Dumbledore, our institution sent a letter regarding Mr. Reel's possible enrollment. Despite the fact that she had taken his hand cautiously and began to shake it, she dropped it almost instantly once the words were out of his mouth and she shook her head. That's all fine and dandy, but like the rest of the lot here at Wool's, Tom doesn't have no money to afford to be heading off to any institution nor the such, and we said much in the letters when we sent it back. She waved her hands, clearly intent on shooing him back out the door, but the ginger man held fast and continued giving his most indulgent smile. Actually, the school would be willing to offer Mr. Riddle a scholarship of sorts, as well as aid in purchasing materials. This seemed to bring the lady to a pause, and she gave an impotent sigh and gestured for the stairs. Fine, fine. He should be up this way in the room for the younger boys. You can call me Miss Cole, Professor. Albus Mary gave another pleasant smile, adjusted his glasses, as he chose to ignore the irritated manner she interacted with him and then her general silence as she led to one of the rooms gave him time to take in the halls and the rooms he passed after coming to the landing. It wasn't so bad for an orphanage, considering how delirant and disheveled some orphanages can be. The floors appeared to have been mopped recently, and while the walls lacked decoration or ornament of any kind, they were relatively clean and appeared to have been painted not too long ago. As the professor passed by the rooms, he could see beds stacked and dressers overpouring with clothes that hadn't been put away. Some odd and broken toys on the ground, a few children playing with paper dolls. It was an orphanage, after all, and he had expected it to be a lively and happy home, but for the place it was, it could certainly have been worse. Coming to a halt behind Miss Cole, he paused as she knocked on the closed door before opening it, peeking her head in only to open the door completely. There's a man here to see you, Tom. Put the book away and try looking smart. Miss Cole stepped from the doorway, leaving the professor to get a better look inside. Like some of the ones he passed by in the hall, it was clearly shared by several boys, with bunk beds and old dressers taking up the wall and floor space. One ragged bookcase took up the rest of the free room, and the boy in question seemed to have a worn tome in his hands, stretched out on his stomach at the bottom bunk of one of the beds. Albus gave another one of his trademark smiles, taking a few steps closer to the bed. This was the first time he'd seen Tom, of course, so he took in the side of the boy that would likely be a future student of his. He was tall, perhaps a little taller than most boys of the ripe age of eleven, even if that did make him look a bit thin for a grown boy. At first glance, she'd be stuck somewhere between believing the boy to be utterly plain or intriguingly edging on attractive. His black hair was combed back just so, and Albus caught sight of dark eyes while watching him with a mixture of distrust and curiosity. Hello, Tom. Albus lowered himself to take a seat on one of the lower beds that sat across from Tom's along the opposite wall. Tom's dark eyes blinked rather owlishly at him, and he folded the corner of his book he was reading, closing it quietly before turning to give the older man his full attention. Hello, sir. Tom, I'm a professor at school for people like you and me, and we're quite hoping you might come and study there. Tom, for his part, just blinked at the older man. He looked to where Miss Cole had been in the hallway, but she had already drifted off, likely to check up on some of the other children or scolding someone. Like what? He said instead, looking back at the man. Professor Dumbledore, which sounded like a fake name to Tom, like one from one of the fairy tales, frowned and tilted his head questioningly. What do you mean, like what? Tom raised his eyebrows. You said a school for people like you and me. 
Like what? He said, parenting back the man's words to him. Professor Dumbledore smiled and nodded. Have you ever noticed you can do anything special? He asked. I can do my multiplication faster than anyone in class, he said, just a bit cheekily. He didn't know the man, and whatever school he was here to represent was unlikely want anything to do with him. People like him, places like that, they weren't for poor orphan boys. I mean magic, Tom, the professor said. Tom frowned and shook his head, ignoring the flutter in his chest. Sure, he'd done some stuff, but like Miss Cole always said, he had a good imagination, no matter how much proof he offered. No one had ever believed he could actually talk to the snakes once they weren't little kids anymore. Magic's not real, sir. Everyone knows that. Professor Dumbledore smiled and leaned forward, almost acting like he was going to tell Tom some grand secret. Tom didn't like it. Didn't like the way the man was acting like he was one of the little kids that needed a nanny constantly hovering over them. Too stupid to understand what was going on. Haven't you ever done anything special? He pressed quietly. Something that shouldn't be able to. Something you couldn't explain or reason away? Tom frowned and looked at his hands and thought. If it was real, which, let's be honest, was too much to hope for, then he was fine telling the man the truth. If it was real, well, a few things could happen. He could be shipped off to one of the mental hospitals that they stuck crazy people in, or he could be sent to another orphanage. Maybe they would say he was too crazy to be around other kids. No, he said with a shake of his head. Why, do you think you can do magic? The professor smiled at him and shrugged. Do you want me to prove it? Tom nodded his head, feeling just a bit smug still ignoring the hopeful flutter in his chest. Professor Dumbledore pulled a long stick out of his sleeve, and Tom watched as he delicately swaved it. Several of the clothes that were hanging from the dresser drawers lifted. Tom's eyes widened in wonder as he watched the clothes fold themselves. The drawers pulled themselves open, and the clothes gently depositing themselves down in the proper spots, and then the drawers closed and the dresser sat still. Tom whipped his head around to stare at the older man, then jumped off the bed darting to the dresser to look at it. It couldn't be real. It had to be a trick of some kind. Right? Is that proof enough for you? Professor Dumbledore asked cheerfully, twirling the stick in between his fingers. Or shall we sort the bookcase by name, too? Tom turned and looked back at him, still touching the dresser if it would disappear if he let go. I can talk to snakes, he said, and before he could stop himself, he continued. And I can sometimes make stuff move. I can make Billy's rabbit listen to me, and once I accidentally set Amy's hair on fire after she pushed me down the front steps and scraped up my knee. He stopped and closed his mouth. Professor Dumbledore was giving him a praising look, like some of the teachers at school did when he proved to be too smart or anything or did something he wasn't supposed to be able to do for his age. Miss Cole said I was imagining things, he added lamely. You weren't. The professor consoled. Miss Cole is just a muggle. Someone who can't do magic, he explained when Tom made a confused face. That's why I came to tell you about Hogwarts. It's a school for wizards and witches. Tom shook his head, the balloon in his stomach suddenly deflated. I haven't got any money to go to a proper school, he said just a bit sullenly. You don't have to worry about that, Professor Dumbledore said, standing up. The school has a fund for those who need assistance. He explained, pulling a thick envelope from the inside of his suit jacket. He held it out to Tom, and Tom greedily grabbed it. That sure acceptance letter and the supply list inside has everything you need for your classes written on it. Tom tried his best not to tune the old man out just a bit as he spoke, but he was rereading the words in the parchment paper for the third time, soaking them in. He looked at the second page that was behind the first and looked through the materials. Where would I get all this? Tom asked the man, looking up and then back to the sheet. Is there a special school shop or place I can go for it all? Excellent question, Professor Dumbledore said. There's a row of shops in London that muggles cannot see or get to. They should have everything you need. And the school pay for the supplies? Tom asked again, still hesitant. It was all too good to be true, too amazing to be real. 
Yes, of course. Though we will visit most of the second-hand stores for the robes and the school books. They can be rather expensive, Professor explained. Tom read through the list again and then stood up. Can we go there now, then? He asked, trying to contain his excitement. Professor Dumbledore's smile widened. I'm sorry, my boy. I have other students I need to go see. More letters to deliver. He paused when he saw the look on Tom's face and patted the boy on the shoulder. I usually schedule a time to make sure the students' parents come along as well, but we shan't bring Miss Cole along. So how about I return on Monday, and we shall take our trip then? Tom deflated a bit, but nodded his head slowly. Are there other kids that don't know they're wizards? He asked. Several, yes, Professor Dumbledore said with a nod. We call them Muggleborn, since they are born to muggles, and we explain it to them just like I came and explained it to you. Okay, then, Tom said quietly, folding the paper delicately back and sliding it back into the envelope. What time on Monday? Not to, di not to be dissuaded, I see, the professor said, a slight twinkle in his eye. Tom was quite certain he was the type of man who carried sweets in his pocket and patted children on their heads when they were being good. Monday at nine. You can top off with breakfast and then we'll spend the rest of the day shopping. Tom nodded his head more enthusiastically. Yes, sir. Good. Professor Dumbledore held out his hand and Tom reached out, trying to grip the old man's hand as securely as he could. Have a good weekend, Tom.